you ever feel like there has to be more to life than what you're getting? Like, do you ever feel like there's got to be more to life than just going to work every day, hoping that I make enough money to be able to pay my bills at the end of the month? Do you ever feel like there has to be more to my existence than just going around struggling and hoping that by the end of my life, I've made more than I can spend and that I can retire safely? Do you ever feel like, why do I have to feel like I'm always unsafe or I'm always attacked or I'm always under distress? Well, life doesn't have to be like that because, and you, and you know this is true because you've seen a lot of people who live life in a manner that seems like they just ease through life. You ever have that person that things just always work out for them? And it seems like he or she doesn't really work very hard, but for some reason they always get what they want. Well, I'm gonna tell you, there's a reason behind it. And this is the thing that I'm gonna teach you today. So what I want for you today is to learn that life is actually automatic, say automatic. So we can see that because when we look outside, in the state of Georgia where I am right now, there's been 24 hours in a day for the last 6,000 years of recorded history. That's automatic. The sun has gone up and the sun has gone down every single day for the last 6,000 years. There has been spring, summer, winter, fall every single year for the last 6,000 years. That is automatic. So life or natural life, the laws of nature try to reveal to us that life is actually supposed to be automatic. But what ends up happening to a lot of us is we live life in opposition to what's automatic. I like saying that life is easy. That is my mantra. But easy means automatic. I'll give you an example. If me and you are in a canoe and we're rowing with the stream of the river, rowing is going to seem pretty easy. Why? Because we're going in flow with what's automatic. But if we turn around and went back upstream, rowing is going to seem pretty hard. Why is that? Because we're going in opposition to what's automatic. So I like saying it like this, easy equals automatic, hard equals antimatic. I know that's not a word. It's improper English, but it's proper teaching. Does that make sense? Yes or yes, of course it does. So most of us are living our lives going in opposition to what's automatic or we're living our lives with antimaticacy. Another non-word word that I made up. It's like, you know, we have a natural rhythm. When the sun goes down, we tend to get sleepy. When the sun comes up, we tend to wake up. But most of us out here are actually sleeping during the day and trying to stay up at night and we're forcing ourselves to do this. And I don't mean literally, it's a metaphor that we're out of sync with what's automatic. And the reason that I know that's true, because if you get in flow, like you've seen some people, it seems like life works out for them with no problems. And so here's what I want for you. So there's a method to this that I have to get you to get, because if you understand this method, then you understand life. It's the foundational thing of what you live on. Now, I'll tell you, there's a book that I love. It's the greatest book of psychology that's ever been written, and it's called the Bible. Now look, I'm not a religious person. I don't look at the Bible as a book of religion. I don't even look at it as a book of theology. You may or you may not, that's okay. Theology may get you to heaven, but psychology will get heaven to you. And that's what I want. I don't want heaven right here. I don't know about you, but I want heaven right here right now because I'm not trying to wait until I die to get my pie in the sweet by and by. I'm not trying to do that in the terms of where I am. So what I want for you is I want you to understand there's a process. And if we go back to this book right here, it's called the Bible. And there's a process that's been set out in the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1, the first chapter, it opens up. I'll be honest with you guys. If you get the first chapter, you get the whole thing. Now, the other parts of the Bible will reveal some things, but if you get the first chapter, I, honestly, you get the whole thing. You get the whole crux of life. And this is what I want to get to you today. So Genesis 1, it starts out like this. It says, God created the heavens and the earth. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered over the waters. But then there's something that happened. We see an action. God said, let there be light. And then there was light. And so there's so much that we have to unpack in this. So at the very beginning, so we're going to put the plan for your life, the automatic process for your life, Right, so automatic process. 
So the automatic process for you to learn. So Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. So look, in the beginning, all right? Now, we got to understand what the beginning of what? Now, we know this isn't the beginning of the earth because there was no earth. There was no sun, there was no moon, there was no stars, there was no dirt, there was like nothing. So how can you have something created in the beginning of nothing? The only way is that it has to be created somewhere not physical. In the beginning, you know where those heavens and those earths were created? It was created in the mind of our creator, in the mind. So in the beginning is the mind. Now, any business or any creation or any invention that anybody has ever had, it was not physically invented or created until it was mentally invented or created. Everything. There is nothing in all of reality that we have seen that didn't start in the mind of somebody. So that's the process. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the mind, God had the visual picture of what heaven and what the earth need to look like in the individual consciousness of the mind. But then it says something else. There was darkness and void and the spirit hovered over the waters. All right, so look, it was dark all right, and void. Now, what does that mean? Darkness and void? All right, so, so how can we have... A, 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 a heaven and an earth, but then there'd be darkness and void. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense because you can't see it with your physical eyes. It's dark, it's void, but your spirit, the spirit of God, hovered over that idea that was germinating in the mind of God. To be quite honest, and here's where a lot of people miss it. They have this idea of what they want to do. Maybe it's starting a business or making an invention or whatever it is. And they have this idea and they go straight to the creative part of it. And they go straight to the creative process of it. And that's just not how it works. It works like this. You have an idea in your mind, then your spirit or your thoughts have to hover over it. Okay, so hover your thoughts. Okay, so so that's what you have to do. You have to hover your thoughts over that idea that's in your mind. So it's not just going straight to creation. You have to put a lot of thought into it. And that's why a lot of businesses don't work because they have an idea and go straight to creation. That ain't how it works. You have to hover your thoughts over it. And the last thing that God did, so you see the, the, the darkness was over the face of it and the spirit hovered over it. And then God did something cool. The first physical action that we see God take was what? He said, let there be light. Or more directly as the Hebrew said, yeah, he or light be. <laughs> so then he said, then God says, so then God said, light be, or let there be light. So the, the very first physical action that we see the creator of our species take is say, light be, is speaking. That's the first action. And then something cool follows up after that. So after God, the creator, infinite spirit says, light be, what ends up happening? And then there was light. Here's another thing. It happens, something happens after that. Then after there was light, then what happened? God saw that the light was good. Saw good. So the, the process is written right here, the automatic process. If you want your life to change, all you need is an idea in your mind. And then you have to hover your thoughts over the darkness and the void of that in that mind and then start speaking and say light be business be whatever the first thing needed for your business to be successful let it be see here's the thing god didn't say humans be right here didn't say fish be right here he didn't say animals be right here he said what light be because that's the first thing that was necessary for everything else to work and here's the whole creative process of it it doesn't work if you don't have it finished in your mind before you start. 
I'll be honest with you. Your days don't work if you don't finish your days before you start them. You should have a mental picture of your day, of how you want it to be before you get out of bed. I take time in the morning and I rehearse my day. I think of all the great things that I'm think of all the great things that will happen today before I get out of bed. My day is done before I start. Your business should be done before you start. The homes that you build should be done before you start. You can't just start something and start creating and hoping that it's going to work out when you don't even know what the end product looks like. So when God said light be, and then there was light, and then God saw the light and said the light was good. It wasn't like God said, oh my God, it worked. <laughs> when I said light be, it actually worked. When I said I need fish and he actually came forth and I need water in the heavens and under the heavens. Like when God said all these things, it wasn't a surprise. Stop being surprised by success. Stop being surprised by failure. Because if you follow the process, then in the beginning, if you have something in your mind and then you hover your thoughts over the darkness and the void of your mind, and then you start speaking in accordance to the first thing necessary for that thing to be expressed, then guess what? You're going to have everything that you want. I don't care what it is. If you want more money, start thinking about how much money you want. I, I, I mentor some students in Detroit, Michigan, and I asked one of the kids, I said, hey, what do you want? Like, what do you want? And one of the kids said, I want more money. And I said, all right. I went in my wallet and I gave him a penny and I dropped it on his, on his desk and I went back and started teaching. He said, dude, this doesn't help me. I said, why not? I gave you exactly what you wanted. He said, yeah, yeah well, I want more than that. How much? He said, he didn't have the finished thing in his mind. So a lot of us, we say, hey, we want more money. Okay, how much? I just don't want to have all these bills at the end of the month. So, uh, what, what, tell me, so you're telling me what you don't want? I just asked you what you want. So your, your visual picture is what you don't want. And you're wondering why you keep getting more of what you don't want. Guess who did this for the longest time? I did. I always had a picture of what I didn't want to happen. I didn't want to go broke. I didn't want to get unhealthy. I didn't want to get fat. Like, I didn't want these. So guess what? I had the picture of what I didn't want in my mind. And guess what I was doing? I was hovering my thoughts over that thought in my mind. And then what would what I say? Oh my God, I don't want this to happen. I was saying, I don't want this to happen. And guess what ended up happening? The very thing that I didn't want to happen was happening because this is an automatic process. The problem with automatic processes is that they work whether you want them to or not. Whether you get them right or get them wrong, they work. And that's why in the very beginning, the very opening chapter of this book right here, it tells you the automatic process. So here's the cool thing about this automatic process is that it goes down the line and God wanted fish and saw fish. God wanted trees and plants and animals and got those. But then there's only one thing that God, the infinite creator source says, let us make man in our own image. I'm going to make, a, I'm going to make a being that just like me, but I'm going to put this being in the physical realm to do exactly what I did. I created physicality. Now I want these human species to recreate physicality. And that's it. And so he gave us the blueprint right there. After God created every single thing, the last thing that God created and put on the earth were human beings, were you and I made in the image of him. So what's that mean? It goes right back to the beginning. We were always in the mind of the imagination of God. And so now we have the same exact process at our disposal to go into the mind and to hover our thoughts of the darkness and void of our mind and then start speaking the first thing necessary for the successful outcome of what you want or what you completed in your mind. And guess what? The whole process works of itself. Automatic comes from a Greek word, automatos, which means working in and of itself. The process works in and of itself. So if you want automatic money, automatic health, 
automatic good relationships, automatic good parenting skills. All you have to do is get the fun. All you have to do is get the finished picture in your mind. You have to. If you don't have the finished picture of exactly what you want, then you're not going to be able to hover your thoughts over exactly what you want. And then you won't be able to say exactly what you want because you just don't know. Now, here's the deal. It's not your fault that you didn't know this. I didn't know this until 12 years ago. And I've studied this every single day for the last 12 years. I've studied how the mind works. I've studied that book. I've listened and researched to all the greatest philosophers in history. So I know this stuff. How do I know this stuff? Because I live it every single day. But if you don't know this stuff and you need more help, hey, I am here to coach you. This is my passion. This is what I live for to help people get into their automatic process. It's very simple. I am a coach, but unlike everybody else, I know my stuff works. So what I do is I prove my methods before I start. All you have to do is go to my website, be right here, andreflu.com, and message me. I want to start. That's all you have to do. If you want to start, it's $500 a month for coaching. But Here's the deal. If you don't want to pay the 500 right now and you say, I want you to prove your methods first, this is what I do. All you have to do is say, prove it in the message on my website, in the contact page. And I'll send you a picture with very, very specific details of what to do. And what will end up happening if you do exactly what I say from some source, $500 will come to you and you will be empowered to use me as coaching. So if you want to get started, hey, you can go ahead and get started. But also, if you don't know about getting started with me just yet, all you have to do is go to my website or comment down below, prove it. And I'll reach back out to you and I'll send you the picture with very, very detailed instructions of what you can do and watch how $500 will come from seemingly nowhere right to you in this time to realize that you can find your automatic process. I hope this helps you. I know this is how I live and this is how I want you to live. My name is Andre Fluellen, otherwise known as Flu. Peace.